Okay, 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 we're here for the big show. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. It's Monday, uh, March the 25th. It's your buddy Bruce here. TWB traveling with Bruce. Welcome all to the uh, live broadcast live from Palm Desert, California. Uh, Love and life here. Thank you all for joining us. Jennifer is, says hello and is doing fabulously, doing very, very well. Um, she is now able to get up out of the out of the easy chair, out of the couch, uh, head to the dining room, uh, walk around the house. No nest, no cane, no walker. We go to Costco. We go to Walmart. We go for a walk in the shopping mall just to get a walk in. She is building her endurance back, her strength back. Her therapist is really happy with her, commending her on, on how hard she is working on her workouts between therapy sessions. We head to the pool together. We're in the water. I'm in the hot tub, bubbling away and getting nice and loose. And she's in the pool doing her stretch exercises and her leg lifts and stuff. Fantastic. Um, uh, her her two hips do not hurt her anymore. The only pain she ever gets now is if she uh, is turning over in bed from one side to the other. Uh, when she lies down on her newest hip, the surgical incision area, there's a little tenderness there, but that is going away very quickly. And uh, she takes doesn't have any pain medication nothing required. She's just uh, getting better. So yeah, baby. So we're talking about traveling, the possibility of going on some travels this year. And so we'll keep you posted. Now, the one thing to announce today to this channel, those of, we, those of you who are here now live and those of you watching on the rerun, first of all, thank you for the thumbs ups. Uh, you guys every week come through for me with a thumbs up, uh, button and you let me know what number you are i really appreciate it thank you all so much but the second thing is uh we're doing a meet and greet it is official uh saturday on april the 13th coming up we will we will be doing a live uh, meet and greet event it's going to be in ontario california uh, at the intersection of highway interstate highway 10 which goes from it uh, goes from Santa Monica all the way to Jacksonville. It uh, goes through Ontario, California. And Highway 15 you know, goes from San Diego all the way up to uh, Montana, to Canada's border. At the intersection of the 10 and the 15 interstates is a, a, a complex known as the Ontario Mills Mall. Massive, massive, massive shopping mall. And it has a ring road around it. And on the southern end of the ring road across the street from Ontario Mills Mall is the Outback Steakhouse. And uh, that is where we will be having a get together Saturday at noon, April the 13th. And um, you're welcome to come and join us and come see us. It's uh, from noon to about three o'clock. Lunch is on us. You come down to the, uh, the, the Outback. We'll buy a bite to eat, uh, to uh, take whatever you want off the menu. The key here is to send me a private email to let me know you're coming because we have limited space. We have a patio area that we've reserved. Uh, it's all ours. It's uh, It's got heaters if necessary, but I don't think on April 13th in uh, Ontario, California, we're going to have to worry about at noon hour it being cold out. Um, but uh, we've got a reservation made, and you're welcome to join us if you can. Just let us know. Send me a private email. The email address uh, for me is right here, uh, brucefromert at hotmail.com. That's my email address. Let me know. Uh, you'll find this email address on my home page of this channel. You'll find that email address on my home page on my other channel, Stock Markets with Bruce. Um, and uh, here I am, Bruce Farman at Hotmail.com. Just let me know. Yeah, I'm coming. My wife and I are coming. My husband and I are coming. Let me know if there's one of you or two of you coming. That way I can uh, make sure that we have s or sufficient space for all. Would love to see you. Um, 
happy to do selfies with you and you can meet uh, Jennifer and Auntie Jen in person. Uh, you can meet her as well. Um, and you'll understand that uh, after all these years, meeting Auntie Jen, she looks exactly like this. Uh, this is a you know, spinning image. Uh, you, you'll swear it's Jennifer Aniston. And I don't know what kind of outfit she's going to wear. I'm not sure if she'll be wearing exactly this outfit or will she be in this outfit. I'm not 100% sure, but, um, you know, Jen is, is a fashion, uh, she's a fashionista, you know, and she'll, she'll, she'll have her hair done and, and she'll be uh, well, well looked, uh, you know, well dolled up. And so looking forward to seeing you. Uh, some people said to me, you know, Bruce, with all your YouTube success now, maybe you should wear your, your pimp outfit, you know, and put the, put the felt hat on and put on that coat there and get your cane going and uh, do some walking, strutting in that restaurant, you know, enjoying a little bit of fun with everybody. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, she likes to get me all dolled up with it. From time to time, she makes me get dolled up like that. Although I, I, I don't think I'll be wearing a suit and tie at this event. So uh, come on out and have some fun with us if you can make it to uh, Southern California on April the 13th send me an email let me know you're coming we'd love to see you and you'll meet uh, people from my other channel my stock market people uh, they'll be there as well it's one big get together for both channels at the same time so yeah come on down to the outback and uh, we'll get a blooming onion and order up a steak or a burger or whatever you want uh it's uh, you're all covered uh, like i like to say welcome to the party pal come on out to ontario we'll have some fun uh, all right everybody Fantastic. Here's the uh, here's one of the stars of the show, the bread, that warm bread with the butter. They bake those right on the store. This is the balcony area. We're going to be out here. We're going to be on this whole balcony area, and we'll have our own servers. Uh, here's a picture of the actual restaurant area itself, and it's right near the Ontario Mills Mall. And so uh, a good time will be had by, uh, by all, I am sure and uh come on down and, and come and see us if you need the actual street address uh, just look up outback steakhouse ontario california you'll find this one right by the ontario mills mall a uh, piece of cake uh, easy to find and uh, easy in and out uh, on those highways um, and uh, love to have you come by okay there's the announcement I'll, I'll mention it one more time before the show's over sharon is in the house number one today she was the first one in robert is in here as well hi robert uh, he's catching up with us later nice to see you uh thank you all ms m is here hello bruce jen and everybody number eight thumbs up tonight maple ridge british columbia bruce uh, gas is two bucks a liter that is 740 american no seven dollars 40 cents canadian for an american gallon that's what that means so that's about five bucks a gallon 525 us a gallon for a u.s size gallon spring break prices i guess i suppose ken Kareka in the house hi bruce and all from janet and ken in saginaw michigan it's 54 degrees with rain and, and thunderstorms tomorrow Gasoline is three fifty six a gallon. Good evening. We are number seven. Welcome to the show tonight, Sharon. Brad, Kim and I had a nice adventure today. We went to JFK Airport and we visited the TWA Hotel, including its Lougheed Constellation plane that's now a cocktail bar. Um, if you ever have a layover in JFK and are looking for something to do, I highly recommend taking the air train to Terminal 5 and checking this out. That would be kind of cool. Uh, we're glad to hear that Jen is healing so well. Thank you. Stephen Butler, number 10. Thumbs up, Bruce. Uh, beautiful spring day in northwest Arkansas. Gas is 312 a gallon. Uh, Sharon, you need to buy Jen a new outfit for the gathering. She can't be seen in something that she's worn before. I mean, the paparazzi will be everywhere and they'll die. They'll point at it to go eh, she wore that six years ago at a hollywood premiere you know uh, i gotta be careful i know rocky hi bruce and twb gang uh, it's down to 10 degrees um it's down 10 degrees to 43 fahrenheit now in chesapeake virginia uh, where gas is 323 a gallon and i am thumbs up number six kevin chapman the author himself is in the house uh, great to hear such a good report on jennifer Glad that the West Coasters will get a Bruce and Jen at the Outback Experience. Highly recommended. Thumbs up, number 11. We've done, uh, this will be our third time that we're doing a uh, Outback get-together. 
well, I guess it's the fourth time. We did the first ever meet and greet in Ontario, California, back in December of 2021. Then we did an Outback meet and greet. We did two of them, uh, one for TWB and one for Stock Markets with Bruce. And now this one will be the fourth uh, where we're combining both channels. Come on out here in California and see us. So looking forward for that. Kirk Brunson's Facebook and YouTube channel. Uh, hi, Bruce and TW family. Kirk from the Big Apple is here, and I'm at work tonight. Thank you, my friend, for uh, always being here and being a, a, a member of the channel, sponsor member. Thank you all. So news for you today, uh, some cruise news and other developments. Royal Caribbean has extended their um, uh, their uh, uh, avoidance, I guess, of Labadee in Haiti. Uh, no surprise with all the unrest in Haiti. Uh, the prime minister hasn't even returned back to the country, so you can imagine what it's like. Um, so no Royal Caribbean ships are going to be in Labadee for quite some time. Apparently the ships that are now not anticipated to reach this location include the uh, the independence of the seas, the symphony of the seas, the oasis of the seas, adventure of the seas, mariner of the seas, explorer of the seas, grandeur of the seas, and odyssey of the seas. None of those ships will land in Labadee at all. They're going to go to alternate locations or they're going to have sea days instead uh, rather than go to that location. Um, apparently the uh, ship known as the Brilliance of the Seas, uh, technical issues have, uh, have uh, pop, uh, popped up here for the Brilliance of the Seas. I believe this is that ship, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that is the Brilliance of the Seas right there. Um, apparently, engine issues um, have, hit, hit, have hit the ship. It's a 22-year-old ship now. Um, the, it is based in Australia. It was supposed to be doing an 11-day cruise. Uh, started on the, uh, I think, on the 19th of March. After three days, uh, the, the, I guess the, it was so bad, they, um, they ended the cruise early. And so um, now uh, the ship is, I believe, headed back to Sydney. Uh, passengers have, have been taken off the ship. Um, and they've canceled the next ship sailing. And that was supposed to be a March 30th cruise. And that was a longer, the first cruise 11 days, the next one was longer. That one is canceled. The, the, so this ship is out of commission at least a month. And I don't know if they can repair this ship uh, where they are. I, I'm not sure. Here's a shot of the uh, of the lobby, a beautiful ship. It was a trendsetter. It was, it was a star of the fleet uh, when it first came out. Here's the uh, here's the pool deck here, uh, one of the angles of it anyway, and I think this is another shot of an inside pool area that they have as well. And uh, beautiful vessel, uh, popular over all the years, uh, but you know it's beginning to show its age uh, now in the engine issues, um, you know, unfortunately. But hey, you know. These vessels are mechanical, and what are you what are you going to do? I mean, a mechanical thing occasionally doesn't work out. So that was that news on on the brilliance. Um, now I have another um, issue on another ship, and this is uh, you've probably heard about this in the last couple of days. We're talking about the Freedom of the Seas, the Carnival ship. Uh, fire in the funnel. Well, guess what? It's the second time in two years the exact same ship has had a fire in its uh, funnel up here. Now, the story goes that what caused this fire was a lightning strike uh, in the Bahamas area. The ship was um, uh, 20 miles away from the Bahamas when it was struck, apparently. The fire crews on board the ship Got the fire put out. Uh, here's a photo uh, from last year. This is a, the, a new funnel that was built. Uh, had to be custom built from scratch for uh, Carnival. Guess what now? They're going to order another one. Um, and I guess uh, the story goes that the Freedom uh, has now canceled its next two sailings because the ship is headed to Freeport in the Bahamas, which is not far away from where the uh, the incident took place. And I suspect what's going to happen is they're going to remove the funnel like they did the last time. 
and the ship will operate without the funnel, uh, without the whale tail, and just have a straight funnel straight out um, as they order a new one in. Apparently, damage was so bad, they had to cancel cruises going forward um, to get this thing removed, um, equip the ship with, with what they've got, and then order the new funnel. And probably six months from now, they'll get another one done and get a new funnel added on uh here we go again millions of dollars um to 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 worry about here what can i say apparently um another ship is having uh not having a, a, a technical issues but this ship right here uh if i've got my bearings correct yeah the spectrum of the seas uh this ship is operating out of shanghai and china and they had a five-day cruise booked that they've canceled they've canceled everyone off the ship apparently they managed to get a charter group to take to take the entire ship for a five-day cruise on a charter and so uh, i'm going to assume they did not have the entire ship sold out on the five-day cruise but on the charter it is a sellout and they were probably offered so much freaking money that they decided to uh, uh, cancel everyone out give everyone a uh, a uh, compensation deal that included a free cruise and included airfare compensation and other compensation uh to um you know make up for the fact that they're being kicked off this cruise ship uh, quite something uh full-blown charter five-day cruise out of uh, shanghai june the 14th of this year and mentioning this I, I wanted to mention this ship i wanted to mention the uh the freedom carnival freedom ship and i wanted to mention the uh brilliance of the seas um i wanted to bring all this up because this is one of the negatives of cruising that happens occasionally. It doesn't happen very often, but it is something that can happen where you've booked a cruise for yourself and maybe your, your partner or, or maybe it's a family get together reunion cruise. Maybe it's a wedding cruise. This is the nightmare. A wedding cruise is booked and now a technical issue comes up and your cruise is canceled. A charter comes up, your cruise is canceled. Uh, you're left in a lurch. I mean, it, it, you know, obviously a fire on a ship is a you know is a nasty thing to deal with. Next thing you know, you, you, you're 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 done for. And and now, if it's at the last minute, now what do you do? This is a nightmare that um, can happen. Unfortunately, when you're talking about you know the spectrum of the seas, or you're talking about the brilliance of the seas, you're talking three thousand people. Uh, that are you know possibly inconvenienced um and if it's more than one cruise it really can add up to a lot of a lot of money and a lot of different people's plans and what have you um and this is sometimes where um if you're planning a wedding you might be better off not taking a chance on a cruise you take a chance more on an all-inclusive mexican riviera you know uh, holiday like a one week all inclusive uh, resort in cancun or in uh, costa maya or uh, or uh, port of Vallarta. i mean wherever um for canadians uh those who can travel to cuba uh there have been weddings in cuba there have been family get-togethers much cheaper than mexico because the cubans have a cheaper price for all inclusive obviously jamaica you can do all inclusive vacations there but uh, for cruise ships, <clears throat> when you've got mechanical problems like this, this cruise out of Australia, this, I think the second day, the second cruise that got canceled was 19 days. People plan for years to take a 19 day cruise. This is expensive and this is a big time factor. And people are flying in from North America, from South America, from Asia to come down to Australia, spend a week or so, and then go on this big cruise and have it canceled. Due to, due to mechanical problems. I mean, you can't just book another 19-day exotic South Pacific cruise to replace the one you just lost. It doesn't work that way. And so it can be a real problem. But, it, you know, these things can happen. Uh, quick peek quick peek at the uh, 
at the comments in case I'm missing anything. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm up to speed. Thank you for the thumbs ups. Let me show you something else. Uh, this this is this made news today. Check this picture out right here. Look at this. This is a shot of Antigua. Um, this is St. John's, I believe it's called St. John or St. John's. Uh, they made uh, they made news, and they're very proud of this. Uh, the folks in Antigua are very proud to announce that they were able to handle five cruise ships in one day. Now, I gotta tell you. For me personally, this is a nightmare. Uh, this, to me, is not a home run. Um, being in a in a small island um, and having five cruise ships come in with fifteen thousand people. The report was that fifteen thousand passengers got off those ships this day. It wasn't today, but it was on the one day that this happened. Just just the last just last couple of days. This is not uh, what I'm looking for when I'm going on a cruise. Uh, I am not interested in being one of 15,000 people uh, now trying to get on a tour bus, trying to find a taxi, going for a nice walk in the downtown court. This is mayhem. This is complete mayhem. If you take a look at this picture, the third ship from the left or the right doesn't matter look at the front of that ship and you'll notice just on the land there there are all those buses waiting all those buses waiting to pick up and then drop off them the, the traffic would be mayhem um each of these ships will attract so many uh, uh you know tours and whatnot not my favorite idea of a good time. Here's another angle of St. John. It's a beautiful place. I mean, don't get me wrong. Antigua is gorgeous. But the country has obviously decided that their success is going to come from the numbers of passengers, volumes. They're going after volume business here. I mean, this to me here, this is not enjoyable. Um coming off the ship and then having all these people here and look at the look at the you know the ramp going up the uh, onto the shore there i'm not interested in this um i'm of the age now that uh you know i want to i want a peaceful relaxing vacation i can't handle all the uh, all the action that's here uh, obviously if you're young it's a honeymoon maybe uh it's a it's an anniversary cruise, you know, you're in your 30s. Okay, you know, but you're here for six, eight hours only. Really, I mean, let's be frank, you're getting here at 8, 10 in the morning, you're back on the ship at three to five in the afternoon, and then you're gone, you got to get in a lot of activity in a short period of time. And if you've got to fight the if you're, you know, your taxi or, or bus has to fight the traffic in and out of these small little downtown cores, this can't be a good time. Um, I know that they will have onshore, you know, uh, flea markets and straw markets and that kind of thing. I just don't want to be hustled by all the locals. I mean, you're prime. You're a prime target. I mean, you're a prime target for perhaps a pickpocket. You got to be careful for that. You got to be careful for all the hucksters who are going to want to sell you whatever. I uh, just, it's just not my style. But look, for Antigua, if they've got fifteen thousand people coming in in one day. And they can get these folks uh, that they, they are collecting 10 or 15 or $20 per person on a head tax on a, you know, on a, uh, on a entry fee. The country is getting automatically, you know, $10 a person is 150 grand, 20 bucks a person, $300,000 for the country's tax department to help pay for the peers and the staffing and the Coast Guard and all that. Now, can you get these passengers to spend $100 each on an excursion and $40 of that goes to the operators of the excursions? Well, that, that, there could be 10,000 people doing that. You got 5,000 people meandering through downtown buying t-shirts and postcards and hats and beer and, you know maybe a couple of million bucks are being dropped today in the on the island a couple of million and they get they can get three four good days a week of 10 to fifteen thousand passengers a day they're trying to get a million passengers a year over there twenty thousand a week for a full year but you know you and i know uh it's going to be a six month window where most of the passengers will come and then it's going to be six months of summer and it's not going to be so busy 
uh, I, I would I wouldn't enjoy I mean I personally can't imagine enjoying this uh, kind of a thing but there you are uh, this is uh, the way the country's going obviously in the Cayman Islands as I've told you before on this channel Cayman Islands are, are the opposite the folks who live in the Cayman Islands do not want to have 20,000 passengers a day get off of cruise ships and, and inundate Georgetown Cayman Islands because the reality in the Cayman Islands is that the the folks who live and work there especially the expatriates like that i used to be an expatriate like myself today these expatriates are making a hundred to three hundred thousand a year each as top-notch accountants bankers lawyers consultants offshore investment consultants these folks are making serious money and they are buying or they own or they lease very expensive real estate they, they drive very, very nice cars, and they have friends of theirs coming to visit them for a week at a time, 10 days at a time. They fly in, and then they take them out to the finest restaurants on the island, and they are dropping serious coin per person. Now, there are a lot of people who fly into the Cayman Islands to visit their offshore bankers, visit their offshore lawyers, and then enjoy themselves for a week or two. There are others who own condos who come in and spend two months at a time and leave. And then there are the, the tourists who come into the Four Seasons. They come into the uh, they come into the uh, the Marriott. They come into the uh, the uh, Hilton. They come into the uh, oh gosh, uh, the oh I had it on the tip of my tongue. Uh, high end high end resorts, high high five star resorts. 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 a night in hotel charges. Ritz-Carlton Hotels. Ritz-Carlton has a seven-story, wonderful 500-room hotel, 500 to 1,000 a night minimum. Uh, they are hauling in gazillions of dollars. And staff, well-paid, making great tip money. Uh, these are the tourists that Cayman Islands wants. That's the Cayman Island way of making money. Lower numbers, higher per Per person the government of the Cayman Islands is having trouble passing an act in Parliament to build a massive concrete monstrosity of a pier to do what they're doing here uh, the, the island of the Caymans does not want this and the the uh, proposed pier that the Cayman Islands is proposing doesn't look like this at all it's much more grotesque and the citizens of the island are saying, no damn way, we won't need this. We have all the major banks here. We have all the major law firms, all the major accounting firms. We have people here who come here to do business and spend a lot of money. Why inundate them with t-shirt buyers? It doesn't make sense. The island is not equipped for up to 20,000 passengers a day to hang out for six hours. The Caymans just aren't for that. They're, they're not known for that. So there's a tug of war going on in the Cayman Islands about this business, the tourism business. Look, God bless the people of Antigua. If you're happy having 10, 15,000 people a day get off cruise ships and you're happy pulling in a million bucks or two million bucks per day on a tourist haul from the six, eight hour visitor, knock yourself out. Um, but um, if you want to make the big money, you will build and encourage beachside resorts that can hold 500 people at a time or 500 rooms that can take 1,000 people, 1,200 people, and have them stay four days to a week to two weeks at top dollar. They will go out to the restaurants. They will go downtown themselves. They'll go all over the place and spend money all over the island day and night, seven days a week. But it's up to you to decide what's the business you want. So anyway, I mentioned that story today. All righty, um, I got one more story for you that I want to mention to you. Uh, Sharon, I wouldn't plan a wedding in Cuba. I still have PTSD from the food poisoning I got there in 15. It's not up to U.S. standards. There you go. There you go. I, I know a lot of Canadians don't, don't care for the Cuban experience, but a lot of Europeans do. They fly in with charter flights into Cuba big time. It's amazing. All right. One more story for you. And um, I thought I'd uh, start it off with this kind of an image for you. Let me show you this picture. Okay. I, some of you may have seen this picture already on some of the other YouTube channels. You may not have. Uh, this is an artist rendition. This is not a real photo, but boy, don't they look real, these photos nowadays. 
these images. Uh, this is a, uh, a scene that Royal Caribbean is now promoting. Uh, they're promoting this scene as well. They're building, an, uh, they've announced that they are going to uh, build and create a, a new um, beach uh, a club in Cozumel, Mexico. They're going to build a Royal Beach Club in Mexico in Cozumel, and this is going to mirror what the Royal Beach Club looks like um, in the um, in the uh, Paradise uh, the Paradise Island one, the uh, the one in the Bahamas off of Na out of Nassau. And what they're after is this kind of a scenario right here. What they're trying to do, and it's a smart thing to do for cruise lines, is you you create a gated, fenced off private beach area for your guests and you transport them there safely in air-conditioned brand new looking buses you you hire you have your own ex executive fleet you don't go with the rickety um you know uh, beat up uh, uh, battened uh, batten you know pummeled up buses in small countries and third countries you have top-notch uh, facilities that you can get people to so they can spend six to eight hours or four or six hours on this beach resort where you have drinks um, you have cabanas you have uh, food water park fun and all that sort of stuff here's a this is not a royal caribbean shot just by by the way this is a Caribbean uh, Carnival, sorry, Carnival's uh, um, Grand Bahama uh, facility that they're building. And what you're doing here is you are working with one, the, the government, the local government, to develop uh, beach resorts for these passengers. And some of these ships, as you know, are, are handling five to 7,000 passengers each and they're being ferried to these private beach areas where the kids can go and run around and you don't have to worry about them getting lost because they can't get out of the park. Mom and dad might take the kids to a water park environment like this and the teenagers are gonna be here. They don't wanna be with mom and dad, so they're on their own, you know that. So the teenagers are happy, the, the, the toddlers are looked after, the adults can hang out with adults and you've got everybody covered you've got uh, beach activities you've got uh, the, uh, the bathroom facilities are western world bathroom facilities absolutely spotless you're going to have um, couples able to uh, you know enjoy these pool areas you'll have adult only areas on these beach areas there are no children allowed you covered it all you've got it covered and what you don't have is you do not have any pickpockets here. You don't have any freeloaders looking for handouts. You don't have any um, jewelry type people trying to sell you a, a wrist, you know, a, a brooch or a necklace or anything like that. You've got passengers that have a carefree environment here to enjoy themselves. Uh, charge everything to their room if they want. Um, and if the ship is close enough with these electric carts, they'll grab an electric cart. Or they'll have exclusive uh, shuttle bus services back and forth. And you can uh, enjoy television inside these sheltered areas and see the sports channels you like. If the Super Bowl is on or if, there, if it's NFL Sunday, you'll be able to watch that. You've got the cruise line looking after everything. And for the cruise line, it doesn't get any better than this because all the money that is being spent in this beach area is cruise line capital. And for the country of Mexico and the Bahamas, this is great because they get their tax money on all the drinks that are sold to these passengers. They, uh, they have employees that are locals that are employed by the cruise line to maintain these facilities, to keep the water filtration at the right level, to uh, rake the sand and keep garbage off the beach. You've got security, uh, all locals hired for that. I mean, th this is a job creator. This is a really good job creator for the locals. 
And for the cruise line, it's a cash cow. And there are no, uh, uh, no one to pay off other than the drivers of these buses. Maybe they're paying a per passenger fee for each passenger that these uh, buses are on. I don't know. Could be the cruise lines own the buses through a subsidiary company that is uh, on the on the island or in the country. And um, these uh, cruise lines are raking it in. Now for the Bahamas, uh, Coco Key, uh, for example, the island of Coco Key that Royal Caribbean has been exploiting and making nothing but money on, they're expanding it. It's 145 miles from Florida. That's all it is. These cruise ships burn very little fuel to get 5,000 passengers on a cruise ship over to Coco Key. And they stay there all day long. And the passengers are either on the ship or on the island. And Royal Caribbean is hauling in all the cash flow from whatever they want to spend money on. Now, of course, if you're a passenger on Royal Caribbean, you don't have to spend any money to go to Coco Key. You can walk around various parts of Coco Key, not all, but various, and don't spend any money at all. Um, but then there are those who... They rent a cabana, they rent a family cabana, they rent a thatched house over the water with their own pool and their own jacuzzi. Hey, they got it covered. They got you covered everywhere to Sunday. Norwegian has got it going on. Carnival has got it going on. MSC is redeveloping their island and expanding it for even more cash flow. They know a good thing when they see it. They also know that Labadee can happen. Labadee is the prime example of why you have these other exclusive island or beach getaway properties. They need to have places to take their passengers to rake in all the cash. They don't go to a waterfall 20 miles away. They don't go to a zip line 30 miles away. They only get a percentage of the action there. Here with their own property, they get all the action. They control every aspect of the experience and no one else gets any of the money and if you can do this in the bahamas uh, nearby uh, the usa you are talking about a seven day cruise where you might have three days on island getaways like this this is making money this is saving money you're not spending fuel you're not going 1500 miles to go anywhere for old timers like me, I'm dying out. We die out in 10 years. It doesn't matter anymore. The Royal Caribbean people are thinking 10 years ahead. There will be families who will be going on an annual cruise to these islands and they will see no culture of any other country whatsoever. They will see none of the Bahamian culture, none of the Turks and Caicos, nothing else. They will go to these private settings only because the kids have a ball they have a blast mom and dad don't have to worry about it and of course uh, they also will have day camps where the kids go off with the employees of the cruise line and they have a great old time doing whatever they're doing mom and dad hang out on their own getting a tan on the beach and getting a break such a smart idea that uh, the cruise lines are using because they are desperate to make as much money as humanly possible to repay the bankers for COVID. The Royal Caribbean and Carnival and Norwegian are a hundred plus billion in debt from COVID, let alone all the financing on every ship, all the financing on their personal office space, all their computer systems. These cruise lines almost don't own anything. They have virtually mortgaged everything they've got and they are cash flowing these resorts and if they can convince the government of mexico to kick in some bucks for services like electricity sewer uh you know all these kind of services and for employees to get in and out of there with with busing and what have you the security 24 7 uh, this is a big deal for Mexico, for the Bahamas, and any other country that wants to work with these cruise lines on these private getaway facilities. A smart move for all concerned. The days of passengers getting off a cruise ship and walking into the naked downtown, small third world uh, country um, cores 
where who knows what's going to happen, who knows who you run into, those days are quickly coming to a close very quickly the the days of the old time cruise ships that needed tugboats to bring them into the dock the pier and then people would come off the ship and walk through the quaint little village of whatever in uh, in different caribbean island country those days are over that that's all gone Uh, there are gangs everywhere there are the same stores everywhere, the same, you know, senior frogs everywhere, the same uh, hooters are everywhere. I mean, it's not unique anymore. I mean, downtown Georgetown, Cayman Islands, there's a hooters across the street from the from the cruise ship terminal. It's right across the street. This is hardly exotic. It's the same thing as Miami. It's the same thing as Fort Lauderdale. People want to get something different. And if they can get to a private island or a private resort like this, where this is the weather you're going to have this is the tranquility you're going to have there might be music playing in the background that is controlled by the uh, the dj on the site uh, very pleasant a place for the children to run around and have fun uh, look at the sandcastle building and all this and the, the water feature this is it right here this is what we're talking about this is what cruisers want the youngsters uh hey, look you're 20 30 some this is what you want you want this scene you'll get this scene you can go to the part of the resort that is this but for families you're going to go where you've got this uh for couples you're going to where you've got this and they have all these zones set up for everybody including the water rides and everything else this is so smart uh so forward thinking um and it's a cash generator for the cruise line absolutely a massive cash generator there you go. Cloud 7 travel is 7 below in Calgary, Bruce. Gas at Costco is 139.9. Oh, my God. And due to go up in April Fool's Day, thanks to the Prime Minister Trudeau, who thinks it's going to make things more affordable with a carbon tax credit checks to Canadians. Yeah, there you go. Stephen Stair, hello, Bruce and everyone. We are back uh, home from back-to-back cruises. We've already booked our next cruise for February 25, 15 days, seven stops, including the Panama Canal. Cloud seven travel, any carbon tax in the U.S. question mark. Uh, Sharon, you're forgetting Bermuda. It's not like that. What you're describing, I I understand. I under, it's, I'm not saying every single place, but it has changed dramatically. Um, it is so different now. I mean, Honduras, you watch out. You you know, you stick to your knitting in Honduras, uh, uh, Belize, uh, certain countries in the in the Latin America. They don't go. They don't go there um what can i say the cruise lines are figuring it out they know what they're doing um we're going to take we're going to offer cruises for for couples for families wedding get-togethers at our own private properties that's that's the direction we're going to go now you can take a cruise that is seven or ten day cruise with various stops in various other countries in the caribbean knock yourself out do your excursions knock yourself out but i can see royal caribbean uh slowly but surely tightening the noose and tightening it and tightening it and they're going to go you know what 80 percent of our cruises in the caribbean will only be to our properties that's the only thing we're going to do you're on you have sea days and you have island beach getaway days that's it and i can see these five day cruises being a huge hit being a huge hit with families every year cheap predictable pricing predictable security um they're gonna want that because who wants to go to nassau for the 15th time in a row i mean really you want to go again no i don't think so uh there you go that's where i think this is going paul i came in late i don't know if you've mentioned whether you're going to have a meet and greet i have mentioned it and i'm going to mention it again we are having a meet and greet um i'd love to have you join us we are getting together. Um, Auntie Jen and I are welcoming welcoming all of you if you'd like to join us in Ontario, California, Saturday, April the 13th at noon. Lunch is on us at the Outback Steakhouse. It's the Outback Steakhouse at the corner of Highway 10, inter, uh, Interstate 10 and Interstate 15, where the Ontario Mills Mall is located. We're across the street from the Ontario Mills Mall. Easy to find. There's a big ring road. You just ride the ring road until you find the Outback. All the brands are there. 
and uh, come and join us. Uh, send me a private email if you're going to come because we would like to know. We need to know how many people to expect and uh, to send me an email. It's right here. Bruce Farmer at hotmail.com. Just send me a private email. Say, Bruce, uh, my wife and I are coming. My husband and I are coming. I'm coming on my own. That would be fabulous. To, so we know. Um, we need to know uh, how many are going to be there. And uh, get your bring your phones, and we'll do selfies, and we'll chat, and uh, it'll be great to meet you guys uh, for the for some of you for the second, third time, some for the first time. That would be fabulous. Uh, that is uh, the 13th of April, Saturday from noon until about three o'clock at the Outback Steakhouse. And you can order whatever you want off the menu. We got you covered. So there you go. Uh, thank you all. And uh, I think it's going to be a fun time. It'll be the fourth time we've done a meet and greet at an Outback. I should make the Outback the official uh, restaurant of uh, of TWB and and, and stock markets with Bruce. I, I got to talk to those guys. They should sponsor my channels because I mention them all the time. In any event, uh, look forward to uh, having you come by. If you're going to come by and see us, that'll be fantastic. I think I've got all the news covered for the day here. Uh, talked about the brilliance of the seas, mechanical problems. I talked about Labadee, Haiti being shut down even longer now. Talked about the freedom of the seas with the second funnel fire in two years. Antigua with 15,000 passengers, and they're celebrating this. God bless them. And Spectrum of the Seas in Shanghai, an uh, entire cruise canceled for June the 14th. An entire charter took the whole ship over, and everyone got kicked off of that cruise. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so it's one of the things that can happen on any cruise. You never, ever know for sure. But anyway, there you have it. Uh, folks, thank you for, for being here again with me this week. And thank you for those of you who are uh, taking the time to hit that thumbs up button for us and giving us a little momentum for this channel. I so appreciate you. We have 33 thumbs ups now on the show. If you can find that thumbs up button and nail it for me, please do. And that would help us dramatically. Uh, we, uh, we ask the rerunners out there, please uh, hit the thumbs up button as well and give us some additional momentum. If we can hit 100, that would be absolutely unbelievable. Let me know what number you are. If you're on the rerun out there, you hit that thumbs up button. You tell me what number you are because I, I get the alerts on my phone all week long. All week long, I see familiar names, friendly names telling me, Thumbs up 84, thumbs up 69, thumbs up 98. Thank you all. We love to hit 100. Fabulous. Thanks to Jen and Bruce from Stephen. Uh, thumbs up. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Sharon, have a great night, Bruce. Give our give Jen our best. You know it. Uh, the best to her from all of you and the best from all of us to all of you out there. We'll see you here next Monday for another big show update. We'll keep you posted on some cruise news and what's going on, what we're hearing about. We'll go from there. Robert, I will see you tomorrow morning on Stock Markets with Bruce. You got it, buddy, for sure. Thank you all, everyone, for being here. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Take care of yourselves, and let me know if you plan on coming to see us in Ontario on the 13th of April. All right, everyone. Take care, everybody, from, uh, from Palm Desert, California. This is Bruce saying goodbye for now, and we'll see you next time. Take care.